Welcome Climate Viewers, my name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org, and weathermodificationhistory.com. It is June 18th, 2018, and today we're going to talk about owning the weather in 2025, all the way to Trump's new Space Force. Um, you may be scratching your heads about this. And I want to break down the big picture for you um, as quickly as possible, providing as much accurate information as I can. And I do that on climateviewer.com, where everything is open source and free of charge. Um, I only ask that you support me on Patreon by giving a monthly donation or on PayPal um, if you want to do a single donation. Um, just as a thank you, and of course, I'm currently battling Graves' disease, so I would go fund me for that if you guys want to support me on that. But regardless, let's jump right into it. So, I've proposed something called the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, and it's based on something called the NMOD, or Environmental Modification Convention, the Weather Warfare Ban of 1978. And, uh, basically... We're in a world where weather warfare is a real thing, that people are using our global environment as a weapon, and uh, it's going to be kind of nuts. So what I want to do is break down the big picture for you pretty rapidly. Um, you can come over to climateviewer.com slash harp and uh, hear about <coughs> harp and the sky heaters. Now... Um, ionospheric heating, uh, geophysical warfare, not a laughing matter. Um, you can see, you know, things like Secretary of Defense William Cohen says others are engaged in, in an eco type of terrorism whereby they can alter the climate, set off earthquakes and volcanoes remotely through the use of electromagnetic waves. So that's kind of your first hint at this space force that Trump is talking about and why it's all coming to be and what does this have to do with um with uh you know freaking owning the weather well i'd like to paint a big picture for you and you can do that by coming over to weathermodificationhistory.com and clicking on environmental warfare on the tags on the sidebar i'm going to go through a bunch of these very rapidly so Russian woodpecker Chernobyl meltdown and ionospheric heating over the United States, 1983 to 86. So the Russians had uh, this thing called the Duga 3 radar. Um, as you can see, it's pictured right here. Nice little video of it. Um, and it is basically a huge antenna. Uh, it's harp standing up vertically. And... This huge radar was used to do weather warfare over America in the 80s. Um, and coincidentally, it is very close to the Dugath or the Chernobyl reactor, um, exactly 5.9 miles. So this is a ionospheric heater that was powered by a nuclear reactor. We blew that nuclear reactor up. It's my personal opinion and opinion of many others. And this was based on uh, information, you know, that was provided in a great article in Popular Communications where they said that 138 people uh, were killed and uh, damaged many millions of dollars of crops when um, a atmospheric zone that should not be there appeared over America in 1983. Chernobyl was blown up in 1986. So the link is there, the information is there, and if you look at the information on this, um, Dr. Mitrowski postulates the Soviet ELF signals or pulses on a frequency of 31.5 hertz and caused giant standing wave troughs in the Rocky Mountains. Um, also, the El Nino was out of whack that year. So lots of uh, nefarious uh, coincidental things happened as a result of this Tesla technology. And, uh, you know, you can see the infographic on to do all the research on that. So that's available on weathermodificationhistory.com. Also, I have a map of that on climateviewer.org. We will get to that in just a second. You can click right here, Russian woodpeckers. And you can see here's the Chernobyl reactor. And you click on that. You can see the blown up Chernobyl reactor. You can see the Duga 3 radar, which is right next door to it scroll down here 
And there it is. Um, that is the ionospheric heater that was blamed for this weather modification over America. So let's uh, move along. International Treaties and Active Experiments in Space, 1989. And you can see the picture right there. This is from the U.S. Air Force Geophysics Laboratory. And they were pretty upset um, about, you know, NMOD in particular and said that great care must be exerted so that they produce no long lasting or widespread um, effects because that would be an NMOD violation and an ability to reduce trapped radiation would increase orbit selection options for future space-based surveillance systems. So what are they talking about there? They're talking about using HARP to suck radiation out of space so that they can increase low earth orbit selections for spy satellites. Um, I think I have an infographic of that up here. Let's go see if we can dig it up real quick. Why heat the ionosphere? Is it under here? There it is. Tether panel recommendation use HARP facility as an Alaska, in Alaska as a wind tunnel to determine the feasibility and engineering specifications of a mitigation system to suck radiation out of space to make that happen. Now they say they're doing this to protect us against high altitude electromagnetic pulse weapons, so nuclear detonations in space and solar flares. But as we can see in the military paper, um, that also lines up with their uh, want to do future space-based surveillance systems in low Earth orbit. More on those surveillance systems late in the video. Next up, we have Department of Defense HARP Steering Group Joint Services Program, 89 and 90. And this is where Navy, the U.S. Naval Research Lab, and the U.S. Air Force Research Lab got together and designed HARP. And you can see that stuff here. This is the Joint Services Program, Plans and Activities, where they designed HARP. And, you know, it was at something called the Workshop on Ionospheric Modification and Generation of Extremely Low Frequencies. So this is space warfare, space weather modification. And this happened in 1990. Next up, we have a FOIA, Freedom of Information Act request, reveals that the U.S. Naval, uh, Navy Weather Modification Program is still active at China Lake. And you can see that's under the Non-Lethal Warfare or Joint Non-Lethal Warfare Directorate, JNLWD, um, and that they want to use carbon black dust, uh, among other things, to do weather warfare. So Navy still involved in weather warfare despite weather warfare being banned in 1978. Next up we have um, also in 1994, this is important, timeline's important, um, FOIA reveals U.S. Air Force Geophysics Directorate weather modification intentions. Title weather modification using carbon black uh, by Phillips Laboratory, Air Force Geophysics Directorate. Um, similar situation, here's the FOIA. These were provided by the Sunshine Project. Their website was deleted from the internet. I recovered this from archive.org. In there, you'll also notice increased cirrus cloud cover. Um, that's chemtrails, people. Why would they want to create cirrus clouds? To deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance. To decrease, decrease light level for nighttime operations. This is important. You're going to hear more about this later in the video. So, military wants to create clouds, create, increase and decrease precipitation, dissipate fog. Um, oh wait, that's not all. They want to do space weather modification. So, in the next paper, uh, counterforce weather control from SpaceCast 2020, this was actually classified. And uh, I recovered this from the Black Vault. Shout out to those guys. Um, and you can see here that this is the paper counterforce weather control this was before owning the weather in 2025 so owning the weather in 2025 is not does not stand alone it is not a single solitary think piece according to all the debunking um you know waterheads out there it's it's an ongoing um active program and the military deeply desires control of weather and space weather. So bore holes through clouds to allow unrestricted surveillance of an enemy target. Once again, there's those spy satellites 
Create an atmospheric event over an enemy airfield so as to ground all their aircraft. Create weather patterns to obscure your military movement from the enemy. Create cirrus clouds. Chemtrails. Make clouds so that the enemy cannot see you. Once again, satellites. So this is from, once again, SpaceCast 2020. This document has been redacted and released according to DOD standards under the Freedom of Information Act request. So, redacted, um, but this was June 1994. So, next up, we come to owning the weather in 2025. Weather as a force multiplier, owning the weather in 2025, was written from 1995 to 1996. And this is where the most popular paper, it gets thrown around a lot. Um, you know, people don't know much about it because they didn't actually read it. I read it and all the chapters around it. So one of the things that jumps off the page at you, right here, 2005, CBD, no, that's not cannabinoid oils. That's carbon black dust, and it has a star, Technologies to be Developed by DoD. This lines up with the two FOIAs I just mentioned to you. So, weather, owning the weather in 2025 mentions by name technology that was mentioned in the previous two FOIAs and in the SpaceCast 2025, um, SpaceCast 2020. Um, up here, you have the WFSE, or Weather Force Support Element, and then Virtual Weather. VR WX. WX is military jargon for weather. WX mod is military jar jargon for weather modification. So WX mod. Um, so VR WX is virtual weather. Ooh, that's what they're headed for in 2025. Not to mention all of these other things, um, you know, chemicals. Uh, the list goes on. Aerospace delivery vehicles. More on those later. But owning the weather in 2025 was written at the Air Force Academy, and it's not just a think piece. This is an, it's something in action, something that is going forward, and I can prove that um, by going to one of the documents here. As you can see in here, this is the uh, Global Weather Network. Um, this is from owning the weather in 2025. You can see it right here. And this little picture right here talks about the Global Weather Network. Well, interestingly enough, I just went to the AMS uh, meeting in uh, the American Meteorological Society's meeting in uh, Austin, Texas, January, where I went to the 21st conference on planned and inadvertent weather modification. I interviewed the guys at Raytheon there. And the title of the video is Raytheon Sensor and AWIPS Combining Weather and National Security. This might shock you. Specifically uses this right now. Weather.com. Uh, everybody. It's no, the National Weather Service. National Weather Service yep. uses uh, AOFS two for their official forecasts. Okay. So you just heard that. All of the weather forecasts that your local weather meteorologist uses and the National Weather Service come through a product called AWIPS. It is created by Raytheon, who is a defense contractor. That is not a coincidence. So that's what they're talking about right here. Getting, gaining control of the global weather network so that they can, you know, let you see what you need to see and then make sure that you don't see what you don't need to see. Um, many other things in here. Um, here's, you know, a, a, a cause and effect of how it works. Use AWIPS to gather intel on weather, um, you know, Intent, uh, weather modification options, WX mine, like I said, um, and then decision making, air ops center, deploy weather modification tools. They've got ground based radars, they've got a U 2 spy plane, and then they've got F 117 stealth fighters here. Cause and effect, boom, and then feedback back to the AWIPS. Hey, did it work? We're monitoring the weather. No, we need more weather modification and the cycle repeats. So this is the military system for weather modification operations. And then I want to jump to page, I think it was 36. Let me scroll down here. And then when, what do we see? Normal ionospheric reflecting layers, ionization layers, mirror. So this is the artificial ionospheric mirror that HARP can create. 
Um, cross beam approach to generating an artificial ionospheric mirror, 1995. Now, HARP came to full power in 1997. So, coincidence? I think not. Um, and as you can see, artificial ionospheric mirrors, transmission stations, ground based aim generator, and receiving station. So, you got a HARP in the middle, and you can bounce signals off of these discs they create in the sky they're basically plasma fireballs um they can also do them with lasers uh bae systems has something called the laser developed atmospheric lens ldal um so they're using our our ionosphere as a weapon system now so space weather as a weapon system now if that wouldn't be enough um i came up with this document U.S. military discusses future of weather warfare despite NMOD ban. And in it, um, this was the Test Technology Symposium 97. The Army after next, how will we test weather modification by Dr. Arnold Barnes from the, wait for it, Phillips Lab, the same people mentioned in that FOIA. And in this, they go through all of the ways that they're going to make owning the weather in 2025 a reality. So you can see the, the information here. Uh, this is the cover for the slides. I have the slide notes as well. I recovered this from, uh, let's see right here, abstract. It was from dtc.army.mil slash proceed slash Ar Arnold Barnes or something like A. Barnes. So I got this from archive.org can't make this stuff up I find all the stuff they delete and I bring it back to you gotta love that stuff so this is a reality and uh, we're gonna move down through this very quickly because I don't want to do every slide but basically right there Air Force 2025 potential weather modification capabilities from Air Force 2025 and what do they say space weather disrupt communications radar disable destroy space assets Fog and cloud removal. Um, you know, the list goes on. It's all the same things over and over again from the FOIAs to counter space uh, 2020, 20. I said 2020, 20. Um, <laughs> and the list goes on. So why are they doing this? Well, they, you know, obviously they have treaty issues. They talk about NMOD, the Convention for the Prohibition of Military or Other Hostile Use of the Environmental Modification, which went into effect October 1978, applies only to widespread, long-lasting, or severe environmental modifications. Um, local non-permanent changes, such as precipitation enhancement, hail suppression, fog, cloud dispersal, are permitted under that UN treaty. Since 1978, the official Air Force position has been that weather modification has had little utility or military payoff as a weapon of war. The official Air Force position needs to be re-evaluated. In light of 19 years of scientific advances, in light of advanced weapon systems which are more environmentally system sensitive, to prepare against technological surprise. So, damn in mod, we need to do this anyway. And then they go back and cite Air Force 2025 again. And coming on down here, whoop, there's HARP. Oh my gosh. So, yep, they're, they specifically mention HARP and they refer to it as a weapon system in the documentation here back to the air force 2025 history of uh air force weather modification stuff weather modification using carbon black also mentioned in both of those foias and mentioned at this joint army air force uh, meeting um, interestingly enough was also talked about using hurricanes but what do we see here increase cirrus cloud cover chemtrails people using carbon black dust that's what the military says so um it's not just me and um why do they say they want to create chemtrails why do they want to create cirrus clouds all over the place to deny visual satellite or high altitude reconnaissance decrease light level for nighttime operations like we did in iraq the iraqis poor iraqi uh, republican guard don't have the night vision goggles so if we can make a bunch of chemtrails make it dark as uh, sin, then you, we have a severe advantage. Not, and alternatively, we can block out China and Russia's satellites so that they can't see what we're up to. So this is why the military wants to create cirrus clouds. 
Um, I could do the rest of this, but regardless, I just want to skip to the very end because this is uh, what they said in 1997. So summary, current capabilities as of 1997, cloud modifications for surveillance and coverage, hole boring, punching holes in clouds, create, suppress, serious contrails. This is not a conspiracy, people. It is military involvement. Ionospheric modification. So let's move along. That is a hell of a document. It is all the proof you need to prove that owning the weather in 2025 is a real thing and the military takes it damn serious. Um, so as we can see, Heart Bakes Alaskan Sky Tomorrow Night back online. And I published this April 5th, 2018. And from April 16th, the 6th through the 14th, um, the University of Alaska, who purchased HARP from um, the Air Force and Navy, they are back at it. And you can see all the research on that. Uh, HARP facility to resume ionosphere research this week. HARP readies for busiest research season UA since UAF acquired observatory in 2015. And uh, the HARP has an official Twitter and uh, Facebook page. And Chris Fallen is bragging about it all over Twitter. So you can go talk about his Gakona Harpoon experiments and the money he's getting to do that. So Harp still very active, um, sold to the University of Alaska. And the question is why? Well, that's because the U.S. Air Force has moved on to new ways to manage the ionosphere. And they plan to plasma bomb the sky with, wait for it, satellites. More specifically, something called CubeSats. You can check these out. U.S. Air Force wants to detonate plasma bombs in the sky. Um, U.S. Air Force wants to plasma bomb sky using tiny satellites. These are different articles. Forget cloud seeding. Air Force wants to plant plasma bombs in the sky with tiny satellites. I mean, what do these guys all use? Like the same freaking title and just like modify it a little bit. Um, but regardless... That's what's going on. Uh, U.S. Air Force plan to improve radio communications, plasma bomb the atmosphere. But this is really all about control of space weather, and it has been since the very start. So now China's getting in on it. China's new heart, playing God with the weather. China's building a massive a geoengineering system in the South China Sea that can knock out communication systems, but some scientists believe it could have a more alarming uses, such as causing natural disasters like hurricanes. Um, check out the video on that. And could these new Chinese radar systems really use, be used for play, to play God with the weather? And this is from uh, the South China Morning Post. Um, not to mention their weather modification activities. They're covering all of Tibet in cloud seeding generators, but that's a little bit off the subject. So China's got a new harp, and let's really get down to brass tacks here. You know, just recently I did a video, Twisted Tree Mystery, Electromagnetic Warfare over in the Olympic National Forest, where Lake Quinault experienced massive microbursts associated with the microwave testing by the U.S. Navy. So they were using something called the microwave ground-based emitter, uh, microwave ionosphere reconfiguration and ground-based emitter, Mirage. Um, they're basically harp on a trailer. Uh, and this is where they said they were going to do it, right near Lake Quinault. And these huge trees were all twisted up. And local weather forecasters didn't even register high winds, downbursts, or anything. They have no explanation whatsoever for it. So the only explanation I have is that they are using things like um, this, you know, ground-based emitter, these ground-based harps. That's why the U.S. Air Force and Navy sold a uh, harp. They don't need it anymore. They've got these new tiny harps that they can pull on trucks and boats and trailers and even on helicopters. Um, and I cover this in depth in an article titled Harp on a Boat, Ionospheric Heaters Go Mobile. And you can check that out, Trucks and Trailers, Air Force Aims for Weather Control. And what they say is, and this is a mock-up of the Mirage, 
The work involves using plasma as an ionized gas to reconfigure the ionosphere. Mirage would employ a microwave transmitter on the ground and a small rocket that shoots off shoots chaff into the air to produce about a liter of plasma at 60 to 100 kilometers. That's 36 to 60 miles in altitude, changing the number of electrons in a select area of the ionosphere to create a virtual barrier, just like in Air Force 2025, a artificial ionospheric mirror. Ionospheric reconfiguration offers two major applications of interest to the military. Bouncing radars off the ionosphere, also known as over-the-horizon radar, and the ability to jam signals from GPS satellites, according to John Klein, lead investigator for Mirage. So this is about, once again, satellite control. And this is space war, space warfare for space weather control. So that leads us to Trump's space force. That's why Trump is creating a space force force because I mean hell you know we've been at this since 1990 when they started the plans for um, you know all of this ionospheric modification with HARP um, we had been hit with ionospheric modification by the Russians in the early 80s um, real quickly let's go back to that one real quick uh, where is it at is it this one right here interestingly enough article by Jack Anderson, the race for Star Wars weapons. This is from the CIA um, reading room, and it says declassified in part, sanitized copy approved for release 2012. This was written May 1981. Jack Anderson talking about Star Wars weapons. He obviously said something that in a newspaper that has been redacted and isn't in this copy. So if anybody can get a copy of the original of this, I would love to read it. Please send it to me, jim at climateviewer.com. But regardless, Jack Anderson predicted all of this, um, talking about directed energy weapons in space, charged particle beam devices, represent a new phase in the historic development and technology, the study reports. When perfected, these control lightning bolts these controlled lightning bolts can solve a wide range of scientific industrial problems, this, the report states, but it adds ominously, Soviet work on charged particle beams is strong in exactly those areas needed for weapons applications, whereas the U.S. work to date has not been pointed towards military applications. It is believed that the Soviets are ahead of the U.S. in many critical uh PBW technologies and that the at present the Soviet level effort should permit them to continue to advance the in these technology areas at a rapid rate so the the basically these particle weapons are what they're referring to is harp these are charged particles these are microwaves of doom this is exactly what Tesla was talking about when he described his um, you know zapping you know the sky but that's why Trump's making a space force because uh, we're already in a space war. Now I want to, you know, really bring this home for you. He says, "Space is like a war-fighting domain, just like on land, air, and sea. We may even have a space force. Wouldn't even be thinking about it going to Mars if Hillary Clinton hadn't won the election. Um, but you will, you will be part of the five proud branches of the United States." Air armed forces, Army, Navy, Marines, and Air Force, and Coast Guard, and we're actually thinking of a six that would be a Space Force. You probably haven't even heard of that. I'm just telling you now, we're getting ready for, we're getting very big in space, both militarily and for other reasons, and we're seriously thinking of a Space Force. Well, he has now really made that a reality. And the reason behind that, and this is really going to be some, some shocking stuff. I've never covered this before. I've known it for quite some time, but I want to point it out to you. War in space, kamikazes, kidnapper satellites, and lasers. So this is a CubeSat. This is what the Air Force plans to bomb, plasma bomb the sky with. It would release barium, strontium, trimethyl aluminum, 
Um, all of the things that I've covered in my sounding rocket videos, chemtrails from space, um, go to YouTube and look it up, chemtrails from space. But this is where it gets really crazy. So you have Kamikaze satellites, the Russian satellite officially known as Cosmos 2499, but it has been given a more daunting nickname, Kamikaze, a spacecraft expressly designed to maneuver up close to another satellite and disable or destroy it. In other words, it's a satellite that could go on the attack. Okay? Next up, kidnapper satellites. These are, you know, basically, uh, you know, we actually observed this happen. AGI's team members watched from their operations floor as a Chinese satellite moved close to a second smaller satellite launched in 2013, the Xi'an meaning experiment in Chinese, was experimenting, shadowing a smaller satellite, according to AGI. Now, AGI is the company that runs the space fence that makes the product cesium, which runs this globe that you're looking at right here. So I'm actually using the same software that the Air Force space fence runs on because it's made by AGI, and before that, I was using the same system that they were using Google Earth, which was called the Joint Environmental Toolkit, and that was made by Raytheon. Um, anyway, back to the story. So AGI tracked uh, um, basically the Chinese coming up and connecting to another satellite to hijack it, a kidnapper satellite. The smaller satellite repeatedly disappeared and then reappeared on their screens. Lasers. Now, this is the big one. Um, in the Persian Gulf, an instantaneous burst of energy destroys targets first on the surface, then in the air. Its deadly firepower moving literally at the speed of light, obliterating its targeting, target, Navy says, like a long-distance blowtorch. So, boom. Space war with lasers kidnapper satellites, and kamikaze satellites. So Ronald Reagan was totally right when he was talking about Star Wars or the Strategic Defense Initiative. Um, but these laser weapon system laws are all over the world now. So it's kind of like shining a flashlight in your eyes. Uh, by the way, that's illegal too. There is a ban on using lasers to blind soldiers, uh, but apparently not to blind satellites. So, who's doing that? Well, we're doing that too. What is the X-37 doing up there? Air Force isn't saying. We asked other space plane experts. So, when we got rid of the space shuttle, the Air Force came up with this drone, and it's called the X-37. And I'm pretty sure that it's doing the exact same thing that they're talking about with the kidnapper satellites. It's a drone that can fly up into space, release a couple dudes out the back, they can go over and stick a little nodule on the side of a satellite and then intercept everything coming in and out of that satellite. It's just hacking 101. So that's space warfare with a drone. Um, next up, Beijing secretly fires lasers to disable US satellites. Right there. And that's why we're having a space force. That's why we're in the middle of a Star Wars. High power lasers used to fire through dense lower atmosphere and reach the fast moving satellites. Lasers can blind electro optical satellites and even interfere with radar satellites. So yes, this is a real thing. This is what's going on. Um, just space war guys. We are in the middle of a freaking space war and Trump is making a space force to back it up. Get ready for China's laser weapons arsenal. Yep, this is April 12th, 2017, and link the article on that. Notice the term ASAT or anti-satellite. So, um, HARP can do this with something called the Christophilos effect. It was discovered in 1958, where they ionize the outside of the, the atmosphere with something called air glow, and basically any satellite flying through that radioactive zone would be fried, circuit boards and all. So basically turning the ionosphere into a bug zapper. That's what we're doing with HARP. 
Uh, next up, Russia and China developing space lasers to shoot down U.S. spy satellites. This is all very, very, very real, unfortunately. So that's the big picture. That's why we're in the middle of a space war. And that's why Trump is creating a space force. Now you can come to climateviewer.org and see all of these instruments. In black is our current space fence. And you can see here, these are the nav spasur um, space fence, the old space fence, which runs um, all the way across the, the eastern or the southern portion of America. They're straight in the line. There's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. There's one, and oh, that's a paid pause. There's one right underneath it, all the way across. And then they got the big ones like the ANFPS 85 at Eglin Air Force Base. Um, all of these are phased array radars, just like HARP. They are in the multi million watt category. And as you can see, they're all over the globe. So this is called the North Warning System because we used to assume that if Russia was going to attack us with nuclear weapons, they'd do it right over the North Pole. Since uh, you know we invented the North Warning System, we realized the error of our ways and that that's not really the way things would probably go down. So we have these ionospheric heaters like the AMISR at Resolute Bay, uh, the AMISR up here at Poker Flat Research Range, and of course the big daddy of them all, harp and harp is right here and you can see it right there so that is the high frequency active oral research program which we no longer need as we mentioned previously because we've got bigger better ones around the world and we have them mobile on boats and all over the place finally with lasers we have things like let's scroll down here i'm going to close some of this up Things like the Starfire Optical Pond. So we have our own set of lasers. Um, this is the Starfire Optical Range at Kirtland Air Force Base. Um, and we've got our own lasers. So yes, um, China's not, China and Russia are not the only ones that have lasers for blinding um, satellites. And this is a real thing. And I've mapped these out in great detail over a long period of time. Um, you can check out these and then this is the International Ra Laser Range Finding Service ILRS you can see these all over the globe click on them see pictures there's a laser click on the next one see this there's a laser you know the list goes on there's a laser um, lasers all over the globe so scroll out all the yellow triangles are laser beams all over the globe black ones are missile defense radars Purple, blue, and red ones are ionospheric heaters, um, and the list goes on and on and on. So we are seriously in a space race, and that is why Trump is creating a space force. And that is none of this is a conspiracy. It is a grand scheme to use outer space for spying on you chemtrails or cirrus clouds to block out those satellites and if that doesn't work lasers kidnapper satellites and kamikaze satellites to destroy those spy satellites because you know a blind enemy is an, a more easily defeatable enemy so you can read about all of this at climateviewer.com slash harp climateviewer.org and weathermodificationhistory.com Links will be provided to these additional articles um, when I post this on climateviewer.com. I hope this has been an informative video for you. I hope that you guys will continue to support me on Patreon and PayPal. And especially with the GoFundMe for my thyroid, I am battling Graves' disease right now. But I definitely wanted to give you guys some updated information on this Space Force thing because it, it just hits right home with what I've been tracking all along that we are in the middle of a space war and the world war world war three is going to be crazy as hell it's going to involve directed energy weapons um obviously a lot of weather control and you know space is, space is key to all of this so keep track by you know keeping up with climateviewer.com make sure you sign up for the newsletter 
Um, you can do that on any one of our pages. Uh, there's a newsletter right here. I'll be sending those out more regularly to keep you guys updated. Subscribe on YouTube and, um, you know, remember that even though these guys may be crazy and what they're doing with the ionosphere and the space weather modification is absolutely nuts, that whenever you contact your congressmen, um, senators whatsoever, remember that, you know, attack idea is not people. But I want to leave you with a question. If the militaries of China and Russia can threaten us with ionospheric modification technologies, should America have those same technologies? Or should NMID, the ban for weather warfare, be updated? Because I personally believe that this ban needs to be updated and that all sides need to agree, just like they did with nuclear missile testing, that enough is enough and that space should be off limits for the use of weapon systems. So that's all we can do as little people is hope that we can reach through to these people and say all parties should agree that this is a no-fly zone, that space should be used for peaceful purposes and not for warfare. And barring that happening, all we can do is sit back, watch, track it all, and talk about it and uh, it's going to get freaking crazy. So please support the Environmental Modification Accountability Act of 2018. I hope to get this passed into legislation and, and update NMOD to include all of these new technologies because it's getting crazy. And, you know, ionospheric modification systems, sounding rockets, satellites, lasers, you know, all of these technologies are in use today. Weather warfare is a reality and space warfare certainly is a reality. So, like I said just a second ago, when you go and you talk to your senators about this, explain the big picture, know what you're talking about, and remember to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.